Steve, everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Dime, and you'll notice a few things are different. This is actually the first video that I'm shooting in my new studio. I haven't finished even painting it, soundproofing it, but I really wanted to get a jump start on this one because it's gonna take me a while to actually do the second half of this review. So, without further ado, ugh, I have a new wine fridge to review. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Dime, and New Air was nice enough to send me this fridge to review. Uh, so this is the unboxing portion of it, and then in about a month, I'm gonna record the other part of this video, which is what is this thing like after you've had it for a month? So this is a new model by New Air. This is, I'm gonna have to go back here and do this. Uh, this is the NWC016SS00 in stainless steel. It is 16 bottle fridge. The temperature ranges from 39 to 65 degrees, so you can get a bit of a chill if you just want to go beyond cellaring. And it is uh, 20 inches by 22.5 by 23.5 inches. Instead of having this box here, why don't I open it up and just toss it on the table for y'all? So I got this thing unboxed. This thing is actually bigger than I thought it was. Like when I first got the box, I figured it'd be a ton of padding. There was a ton of padding, but still this thing is bigger than I thought it would be. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So anyway, besides it being bigger than I thought it would be, one of the things I really like about this is that the instrumentation and all the touch panel controls are on the front of the fridge. I don't have to open it up and access a control panel somewhere in here in order to adjust the temperature or turn on the lighting. If I want to turn on the lighting, the lighting is on. It's not a very strong light, but it's enough to see where your wine is. Uh, if you want to toggle the Celsius or Fahrenheit, so I have it set to Fahrenheit. If you're in a country that uses that weird other scale, uh, you can click that and it will tell you what it is at Celsius. I'm gonna to toggle it back to what everyone should be using. All kidding aside, if you want to adjust the temperature, it's really easy. All you have to do is touch up. Doesn't take a lot of pressure. I'm gonna keep it at 55 because that's where I like to kind of cellar my wines and, and keep them. That's pretty much it for the control panel. It's fairly simple. It's a single zone, so there's no two zones that you have to manage separately. It's pretty straightforward. Now, if you open it up, you have this nice rack, nice curve, and it has this kind of like plastic coating on it that makes everything feel kind of slick and also helps whenever you're setting it back in to kind of slide in pretty quickly. Let you hold a couple bottles of wine up top as you see there. Then there's another rack down here. Uh, you can add more wine if you want or if you want that pops out too. And uh, if you're someone like me who sometimes buys magnums or champagne they don't really sit very well. This fits right here. This is just a nice little retaining basket. You can pop everything upright right here. Now, I know what you're probably gonna say is, why are you storing wine upright? Well, this fridge really isn't designed for very long-term cellaring. And the reason why is that there is no water retention tray in the bottom to help with humidifying the environment to make sure the corks don't dry out. So if you're buying this fridge, it's more geared towards someone who wants to keep their wines cool. You're not going to be cellaring them for a very long time, like years. You might be cellaring them for maybe a couple months or for an event, chilling them down. This is the perfect small wine fridge for you to do that. Or at least it should be. I haven't really had wine in it more than five minutes. So let's go ahead and let this thing come to temp. I'm gonna live with it for about three or four weeks, and then I'm gonna shoot the second half of this video and tell you what I think about it. But before I begin the pros and cons list, New Air was awesome enough to send me a link. So in my video description, you'll see a code where you can get 10% off if you're buying this model of wine fridge from the New Air website. If you're interested and you're gonna go through with the purchase, definitely save yourself a little bit of dough by using that code. Hey everybody, so I've been living with this New Air wine fridge for about a month now, and I've come up with a pretty long list of pros and cons for it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with the pros. Excuse me, uh, 
I wrote a lot here. I, I need to cheat sheet on this one. All right, so for the first pro, it's exterior accessible controls. All these controls being able to touch without actually opening up the blind fridge is nice. Now, I don't mess around with my controls very often, but say I get in a ton of white lines that I want to review. I don't have to worry about opening it up, pushing the button, setting it down. I can just be really lazy and just walk over there and lower them when it's time for me to get those wines to the right temp. It's nice because it's one less thing I have to do. All right, so for the second pro is that it actually maintains temperature pretty well. Uh, I really haven't seen it kick in the compressor too many times. I don't know if that's because of where it's located in my room uh, or just because it, it's a really strong seal. Now, sometimes it will go over, I'll see it's at 53, and that's because it, it's gone up a little bit and it's maybe trying to hit like 57. Maybe something goes on with actually at that point losing the seal or maybe it's hot and it's kind of getting some extra temperature in this area. Uh, but anyway, it, it kicks down to about 53 and then it comes back up to 55 and then it stays there for a really long time. So there's a few degrees of variance, but nothing wild. So overall, I would say it's a pro. All right, so the next thing is that it actually has a pretty small footprint. My other wine fridge is about as wide as this one and is about this tall. And that is a lot of space, especially if I have someplace like my new studio, which it's large, but I don't want to take up a bunch of space with a whole bunch of wine fridges. So it's nice that I can have all my studio samples in a smaller fridge waiting for review. And it's just kind of out of the way and I don't really think about it very much, except for one time, but I'll get to that in the cons. So another pro of this model is the temperature memory. I have had some wine fridges in the past. The power goes out, there's a lightning storm, there's something going on and the power goes out. When it comes back on, it defaults back to the manufacturer setting, which is like the max temp. This one actually comes back to wherever I set it. So I was talking about how I kind of played around with the settings a little bit. I had it at 52 for a bit. The power went out because we've been having a lot of storms here in Texas. And then about an hour or so later, it came back on and it went straight back to cooling down to 52, which was super nice because I didn't have to worry about going around and resetting it. Luckily, the other new air wine fridge I have also does the same thing. So that's nice that the temperature memory still stays from model to model. That is something that's actually a very nice thing to have, especially if you're someone who's maybe gone on a trip, the power goes out and you're not coming back and you don't want your wine to get too hot. So the next pro is the removable shelf. As you can see here, the shelf is actually removed at this moment. I have a whole bunch of stuff that I got in and I have to review it and I needed to make sure I maximized the space in this fridge. So I went ahead and took that shelf out, moved things around. Now, if I didn't have all of this stuff that was filling up that bottom basket, by the way, the secure basket is also part of this, this thing doesn't come out, that's nice. But if I needed to have a little bit more space for the stuff to lay down and not feel like it could fall out, then I could put that shelf back in. And typically I don't run this many samples. I'm pretty lucky lately to have a lot of things in, but yeah, that nice little removable spot allowed me to get another about three or four bottles into this fridge. The next pro, in my opinion, is the finish. I'm a big sucker for stainless steel finishes. It's like, I like all my appliances being stainless steel in the kitchen. I like all my wine fridges being stainless steel. That's just a personal preference. Some people like solid colors. I like stainless steel. And the final pro is the weight. So this thing I expected to be way heavier than it was. I expected me to need to like take a dolly, strap it to the dolly, take it up the stairs, unbox it, do everything I needed. I was able to grab this box and just walk it right up, no problem. This thing should be heavier in my opinion, but it's not. But it does a good job doing what it does. So I think it's a great weight for the bang for the buck that it delivers. I'm pretty happy about it. It's not hard to move whenever it's empty. When it's full of wine, yeah, it can be a little bit heavy. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Take all the stuff out if you're gonna move it. All right, so now that I've talked to you about the pros, it's time for me to take a sip of this wine and get into the cons. All right, so for con number one, the first thing was I can't actually get 16 bottles of wine into this thing. I was only able to get 15. So, I mean, if you're someone who must, must have 16 bottles, then uh, this is a deal breaker for you. If you're someone who can slide with just drinking one of those bottles and putting the other 15 in, yeah, this will probably be fine. All right, con number two is when the compressor actually does kick in to re like balance the temperature, it, it can actually be pretty loud. There are times that uh, I was trying to shoot a wine review and I actually had to stop shooting the wine review and wait for the unit to come up to temp 
before going back into the review because it can get pretty loud. I mean, I'm sure you can probably hear it in the background right now. If you're someone who needs a silent run wine fridge, then this is not gonna be it. At this price point, I wouldn't expect for it to be silent. I would I would expect there to be some noise because it's, it's a under $300 wine fridge. I would not expect a silent run fridge. However, still, with all that being said, if you're someone who gets concerned about noise, ambient noise, then this fridge is probably gonna be too loud for you. All right, con number three is upright storage. So I talked about how I was able to like wiggle things around and get 15 bottles in. However, half the samples are being stored upright. This is not ideal for long-term storage on wines. You want the liquid to come in contact with the cork to make sure it doesn't dry out on the inside, especially as it's drying out on the outside, in order to make sure that that cork doesn't shrivel and you get spoilage. So in this case, this fridge is not necessarily one that I would also recommend for long-term storage. This is more of a short to medium term storage fridge overall. And that actually goes into the next con, which is there's no humidity tray. So in my other wine fridge, my dual zone wine fridge, I actually have a tray at the bottom that's made for holding water that allows for there to be like a certain level of controlled humidity within a unit to prevent the corks from drying out. This does not have that. So if you're buying this fridge thinking you're gonna put stuff in it, you only have a small collection, but you wanna hold it for years and years and years. Now, no, this fridge is not good for that. that. Those wines will not last that long in a fridge like this. What you need is one that has some sort of humidity control and the same types of great controls and memory settings. When wine is sitting up top with no humidity control, it's not gonna end well if you're trying to age wines for the long term. So that being said, those are two cons that I have with this fridge also. The next con is the lighting. The lighting is weak. It's just like, it feels like it's like a single LED, a blue LED that's in there. You turn it on, you hardly notice a difference. I kind of go back to that other wine fridge I have. That wine fridge has a few different light intensity settings. They're all blue light. You hit the button, blue light one, boom, you see everything. Blue light two, it's a little accent color. Blue light three, gone. This blue light one, blue light two, and it's off. Just like the compressor is right now. Hear the difference? The next con is that there is no lock on this wine fridge. Yeah, so if you're someone who's worried about children getting into it, or uh, even worse, your spouse stealing your samples and drinking them before you have an opportunity to review them, then uh, this fridge is not going to work out. You need to put all that stuff in another fridge or be like me and have a lock on your door so someone can't get in. All right, and so in the final con is that the controls can sometimes be a little non-responsive. So there are times where I've been hitting the buttons on this thing and stuff just wasn't necessarily happening. Uh, I hit this and it wouldn't necessarily go up or go down. Uh, I hit this and it wasn't changing the Celsius or Fahrenheit. I was turning on the light and even though the light was weak, I still noticed it wasn't coming on. It, it was just one of those things where I kind of had to play around with a lot in order to know like exactly what part of my finger needs to contact this thing. If you just go up here and start pushing buttons, you might get a little frustrated at first because you'll push something in it. Push it three times and it only happens once and you just kind of have to get used to the way that the controls work on the outside of the wine fridge. All right, so my overall impression with this fridge. Overall, I think the fridge is good, but it's not going to be a fridge that I would recommend for long-term storage. If you're going to be getting bottles and you want to age them multiple years, maybe even a decade or two, this is absolutely not the fridge to buy. There's, there's some things that are about it that don't help with the aging process if you're gonna be storing a reasonable amount of wine. Now that means that I can turn it on its side and there could be some contact, but I still have no humidity control. So after a couple of years, those corks are gonna start drying out. And that's bad news. So what I would recommend for long-term storage is to maybe look at some of the other new era products or other wine fridges and say, hey, what in here has humidity control, ideally even humidity sensors, that's taking it up to the next level, and allows for me to put everything laying on its side, then those are the things you need to look for. If you need something for casual entertaining, holding a bottle of wine for a little bit for like special occasions, um, or if you're like me and you need something that is just small out of the way to hold all your samples before you shoot all the videos on them, yeah, this fridge actually does its job. It's a, it's a good product. 
especially for under $300. And don't forget that if you use the code Wine on the Dime, as I've already mentioned, whenever you're checking out on this product on the New Era website, you save 10%. It's not bad. You could probably go buy like a piece of fence post for that. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you tried? I need to use the book because this is a very hard serial number to read. The New Air NWC016SS00 16 bottle freestanding wine cooler. I'd be interested in what you have. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dot.